here we go, another episode of Canada on the Rocks. I am your host, local realtor here, Fadi Kuder, with Sutton Group Ottawa. And this show is all about interviewing business owners here around the city. And today, what better than one of my favorite businesses in the city, Nasser Nasser from Juice Dudes. How are you, buddy? I'm very good. Thank you for the nice intro. I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much for making the time for us. It's been uh, quite some time we've been trying to get you on the show. And we're always, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it next week. Yeah, yeah, maybe in a week after. But I really appreciate that we finally put the time together. My I know you guys pleasure. have been really, really busy. So what did you realize like when you first started, like every business, there's always hurdles in the way. What was the biggest hurdle for you to get started? To get started, like in the very, very beginning. Yeah. I mean, the first one was finding the location. Location. Yeah, it was, it was tough, man. I've been turned down everywhere. Location is probably the, the hardest thing for any business to set up yeah. because especially if it's your first, that's your flagship, right? And, and you also don't know what's a good location, Yeah. right? Uh, and and then when I opened, I realized that was a terrible location that we took. Thank God we do very well now, but that's thanks to marketing and great brand and whatnot. Uh, I'm like, man, what did I do to myself? <laughs> what what was, so was, what would you change? If you were to change anything about it, what would you change? Nothing. Nothing. It all worked that's, out to be the right answer. fantastic. That yeah. is the right answer for sure. The biggest thing we find as well, too, like in, uh, especially like as a business, starting commercial, you know, like finding a space, is a lot of people do it without necessarily having the, the help necessary at the beginning. And that's the biggest thing you can do, like the biggest problem you can do for yourself, right? Like just trying to set up something without someone that knows the area really well. Yeah. Kind of thing. And a lot of times, especially like if you're a tenant, most of the time it's the landlord that pays anyways. So you're not necessarily having to fork out, you know, 10, 15 grand, whatever, for a real estate agent to, to get that sorted. I want to say almost 90% of the time, it's the landlord that actually takes care of it. So you don't have to. But do it anyways, because it's you have somebody that's like your advocate that's working for you, trying to get things done for you properly. So let's go back to now that you're franchising. You're going to six stores, hopefully within the next six months or so. How do you guys go about choosing the right franchise or very good question. It just for for a big picture, we have six people now. We picked them out of 260 applicants. Mm -hmm. 260 people said, here's my money. I want to be a part of this. I want to talk about this. And uh, we only picked, what is it, four or five of them. So we currently have one operational and four in training. Very, very picky. Now, I don't want to give away all the tips because I don't want people to know exactly what I want and go and apply. <laughs> but... The number one thing we look for is not experience, is not money. I remember when I wanted to start my business, I was I was going and talking to franchises to maybe buy into a franchise. And li literally, Fadi, every single one of them, the first question they asked me, how much money you got? And, and I tell them how much money I got at the time, and it wasn't much. Uh, it, was, it was a big deal for me. It was, I don't know, 50, 60, 70K. Every single one of them said, we're not interested. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They didn't even continue the conversation. So the first thing we look at is not the money, it's not the experience, it is the values. Because we're very big on culture. Yeah. Right? I can train you to make juice. I can train you to, how to, to run your team. But I can't train you on how to be friendly. Right? That's what I do with my team too. Character. The reason why they take care of you when you, when you go and visit them is because they're genuinely nice people. If they're assholes, there is no way I can train them to be nice to people. Yeah. I don't have time for that. It's probably going to take me, you know, 10 years. I don't have time for that. So this is one example of values and why are they very important. It's because you, you really can't change them. So we look for certain values that mesh with all culture. And once we find that, everything else is easy. Money will figure it out, you know. We'll make it happen regardless. And, and that's one of the things that, that that is very important to me is because I was – approaching multiple franchises uh, in the start as as a young hungry motherfucker and people tell me no we're not interested because i don't have the money i was thinking that you don't know what you're missing out on man yeah. you don't know what i can do <laughs> and you're turning me down just because i don't have the money so now money is like don't worry we'll figure that out you have the values that i'm looking for and and that's how we pick them and that's the biggest thing like when you when you're looking at uh, sort of someone that you're trying to hire or someone that you're trying to work with is is really just how well they fit within the culture, within mm -hmm. the team. Because that one wrong fit can destroy the whole yeah. thing. Yes, it can. And then bring like a massive sort of disgrace to your organization, right? And just be like, oh, yeah, I went to this 
juice dudes on whatever street and, and it was a horrible experience. Yeah. So that's the biggest thing is like just being able to find the right fit that kind of just goes in and really just makes it a whole in a exactly. way. Uh, how long is, of a process is it for you guys to vet, you know, a couple, couple of hundred people to? Well, that happened within two and a half years kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's just in and out, like you're always accepting applications and yeah. just kind of going through. Always talking like to that. people, always open to talk to people. And what's it like to, like if, let's just say I'm a young entrepreneur trying to start something out that I don't want to start it from scratch. I do want to kind of maybe lean towards the franchisee model. What's it like to, you know, get started with something like? I, I think it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity. Uh, I can't really talk numbers because that can, you know, bring some liability problems. Mm -hmm. But the return on investment is great if you are the right person with the right values if you enjoy working in the food industry if you genuinely enjoy making people happy and healthy and and, and you're a hard worker you can make great money and you can be very happy doing it because you're doing what you love and mm -hmm. you're making good money at the same time and 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 at the end of the day man you're you're building an empire for yourself right when i started juice dudes you know a couple years uh, later i brought my whole family from lebanon most of them work with me now i have three four cousins that work with me so being in a position where you have the opportunity to help people that deserve the help is, is an amazing feeling so yeah. doing what you love making good money, helping others around you, making two, 300 people very happy every single day is, is, a, is an amazing thing. It's a, it's a great opportunity. And for you guys, as far as franchisees are in, like, do you have sort of limitations on location or how far from each other kind of thing? Yeah. What does that look like? You know, the vision for Juice Dudes is not to become like Tim Hortons where you, ha you have a location in every corner. Juice Dudes is, is more of a destination product than a convenience product, right? When you go to Juice Dudes, you wanna drive five, 10 minutes to get there. You, you're on a journey, you're going to a destination, you're going to have fun. It's not like your morning coffee where you just wanna have it around the corner and keep going to your job, yeah. right? You don't, you don't go there because you're hungry. You don't go there because you're craving caffeine. You go there to have a good time. So we wanna, we wanna keep it at that. We don't wanna have that many locations. The vision is to have one maybe in every major suburb and, and maybe a couple downtown and that's about it. Mm -hmm. And is there plans for you guys to take this to the next level, maybe national, maybe international? Yeah, 100%. Next year, we're doing um, Toronto and then hopefully Montreal after. Of course, we want to be all over Canada. But at the same time, we're also working on international. That we're currently working. I'm hoping to start something in Dubai, Dubai and KSA. And in Very nice. So what's your message for young entrepreneurs out there that are looking for starting anything? Yeah. And the number one thing, again, find what you love, find what you would do for free yeah. and build a business around it. Make sure that business has a lot of need. It's a niche. It doesn't have a lot of competition. Find that. Just put everything you have onto it. Now, keep in mind, starting a business is not like having a job. You're going to have to work harder than ever. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got to make sure that you're capable of doing that and you're happy to do that, not just capable. I think everybody's capable of working 12, 14 hours a day, yeah. but not everybody's happy to do it. So you gotta make sure you're- You're, you're always ready you're rolling up your do. sleeves. Like yeah. you always, I always see you rolling up your sleeves, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is true. Yeah, these are, these are basically the biggest thing. Of course, there's a lot of technical advices that I can help people and I'm always happy to help people, but these are the absolute main things. What do you think, kind of, you know, set juice dudes apart from other businesses in the city, and especially when you said, you know, you had that sort of moment where it kind of clicked at the beginning of the pandemic. What made you guys different? What makes us different? <sighs> Loud and proud. <laughs> the thing is, I don't want to really talk shit about people, right? But remember the customer journey that I walked you through? Mm -hmm. I think this is what makes us, this is what makes us different, right? You know, when you go to juice dudes, you know that you're going to have a good time, you know, from the moment you open the door, you're getting greeted to the moment you leave. You're going to ring that bell, a bell of happiness we call yeah, it, yeah. before you leave. This is this is what makes us very different. From, and, and that is not only customer service, it's also the product. We use the best possible ingredients we can find. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm buying strawberries for 30 bucks a box and I find a better brand for 40 bucks a box, don't doubt a second. That, that I'm gonna overthink that. I'm gonna buy the $40 one if it's, if it's any better. 
every every day of the week. So so the ingredients are good. We care. So you know that's why we we get the best ingredients. That's why we follow the best processes and the highest hygiene standards. And then we build the the, the nicest crepes and waffles and juices and, and and we give it to people and and we make sure they're having a good time at this. So I want to go back again. You know, young entrepreneurs starting at 24. There, the biggest thing that we find with entrepreneurs is that mindset. What helped you get into that right mindset? Do what you do. You mean in the very beginning? Yeah. It was was that that book, that sentence that I read. Do what you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. I wanted to do what I love. Mm -hmm. and it turns out I love entrepreneurship, and I love combine the passions and. There you go. And what keeps you going sort of day to day today? That's another great question. Well, what keeps me going is first of all, of course, doing what I love. Uh, I want to get a little nerdy now. I just finished that book. It's called Drive. I recommend it for everyone that is. And from that book, I learned that carrots and stick doesn't work on everyone. Are you familiar with the yeah. concept? Yeah. Yeah. So not everyone is going to be motivated by, by telling them, hey, here's some extra money, work a little harder. Or you're going to hit them with the stick if they don't work hard enough. Uh, turns out the, the true motivators are intrinsic. And the main ones are, number one is autonomy. I am I'm a good leader. I, I like to think that I'm a great entrepreneur, but I was always a shitty employee. I always worked hard, but I always questioned everything my leaders told me to do. Mm -hmm. Right? I'm not a good follower. It's, it's actually very true that a lot of shitty employees are great entrepreneurs, by the way. Yeah. Not really. To, to a this lot of good, good entrepreneurs are shitty employees, that, but not a lot of shitty employees are good entrepreneurs. <laughs> uh, so anyways, uh, it turns out I like autonomy, right? So I, I now have the autonomy to work when I want and do whatever I want and take the decisions I want. Therefore, I'm working harder than ever. Mm -hmm. So that, that does keep me going because yeah. I have full autonomy. I work seven days a week. 12, 14 hours a day, no problems, very yeah. happily, excited to get out of bed every single day. But I know I'm going to wake up, make my own decisions. I'm going to do my thing. I'm it's do it's what a, makes an me obsession happy. that we entrepreneurs have is like, you know what? Like I was at a nine to five job. I was happy. I was making good money. But like to me, it's autonomy. It's exactly. just being able to say, you know what? Nah, I don't feel like working today. Yeah. But tomorrow I'm going to work like 17 hours, yeah. which is good. Yeah. You know, the day after I'm probably going to put 20 to some hours, and which is fine. Yeah. But it's, like, you're able to kind of determine what you want to do. Exactly, exactly. And you're it's able fun. to say, I want to work with you. I don't want to work with you. I really don't like you. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> do any business with you. Yeah. I love this person, but I want to do a lot of business with them. Yeah. And it just, yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing that a lot of entrepreneurs suffer from is yeah. that sense of like, I want to be yeah. autonomous. I don't want anyone telling me what to do. I remember when I used to work from my dad, my dad is a great guy. I learned a lot of things. But at, at the time, we he had a fruit shop. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm this young buck and I come with these ideas and I want to do this and I want to do that. And very often he turns me down. I'm like dying inside. I'm like, man, there's so much money on the table here. There's so much potential that we're not capitalizing. Mm -hmm. on. So now, you know, going back to autonomy, I think of an idea, I fucking make it happen. And you know how happy that makes me yeah, feel? Yeah. Especially knowing that I was in a position before where I had a lot of ideas, but exactly. I couldn't put it into And use. the good thing about this is you get to try it. If it doesn't work, who cares? You just try exactly. something else. Try as long there. as it's, you're not, you know, spending too much money trying it uh, and you're doing it in a way that it's healthy for the business. Exactly. Fantastic. Exactly. So there's autonomy, there is mastery. I'm very passionate about mastering my craft about being the best guy possible for the job. So what's I'm your still, advice on that? Like for, for someone to be able to master their craft, yeah. what, what should they do? I'm a learning junkie. So I'm, I'm always trying to learn new things. I'm always trying to master what I'm doing. So I'm constantly, you know, listening to podcasts like this. I read two books a month uh, about the things that I lack on. For example, if I find that I have a problem I'm, I'm a bit of an impatient guy. So I do read a lot of books about leadership and how can we improve mm -hmm. certain areas. So so I, I always try to find ways to learn things that I'm not the best at. Yeah. And whatever I'm good at, I put everything I have towards it to, to actually use it and capitalize on it. I like how you said like you have two books a month, which is when you look at it, the average North American reads about one book a year. So you're about 23 books ahead of everybody at least, or the average people. Uh, the other thing too I find with books, and then this is something that I've learned at a 
both like very, very luckily at a young age, is that you never know what sort of advice that or what that idea that one book might have. It might have just one idea for yeah. you. But that one idea, like yours, for example, you yeah. know, working for something that you love, changed your whole life. 100%, 100%. This book, Drive, now, uh, I, I just finished reading it. I'm always like that. When I finish reading a book, I, I talk about it for like weeks after, especially yeah, when, yeah. It, when it makes such a big difference. Anyways, when I finished reading it, I, I'm just literally changing so many things in our system at Juice Dudes, thanks to that book. Yeah. So imagine, imagine the value that that brings. So that's mastery, my man. And that's the thing too is it's a, you're always going to have that hunger that drive like you said drive for enhancing your abilities and yeah. even if it's just like 1% a month yeah that's 12% a year uh, exactly. 1% a day holy moly you're looking at 300% a year 365% yeah. yeah that's massive uh, so that's the thing about business is like you you know if you're not evolving and changing and keeping up adapting might as well die yeah Really appreciate you being on the show here, Nasser. Of course. Thank you so much, man. And uh, I'm always looking to see what's what's coming up, what's new. Uh, one of my favorite stores, I always end up tagging them anytime I go. It's uh, it's like a, a weird habit that I have every time I, I hit the store. I'm like, I got to tag them. Because the the amount of joy that I get when I go to the store, just by having, because I love fruit. For me, I'm like a, a massive fruit guy. Like I would, if it was up to me, I'd probably eat fruit all day. Nothing else. Uh, and the reason being is because it's healthy. It's, you know, you feel better. It's good sugars. It's not bad Friggin sugars. Friggin' delicious. Delicious. It's basically nature's miracle. Yeah. And, and you just pick it up and eat it kind yeah. of thing. Thank you. That means so, a lot. Thank you so much for being on the show and uh, bringing in a lot of wisdom. And then for young entrepreneurs that are watching and uh, people that are around Ottawa that are watching, there's so many businesses in Ottawa like this. They all have massive, great stories. And we would love your ideas to bring them on the show as well. Uh, so for more episodes like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon so you can get more and more alerts when any episode like this comes out. And uh, if you like what you see, hit the like button and comment if you want us to interview any business that you think is deserving to be on the show. Again, Nasser, thank you so much. My pleasure.